Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, there is nothing more wonderful than having your own studio 10 minutes from where you live because then you can come in and do rapid responses to anything that you know happens during the course of this campaign. And I was blessed that uh, I have this studio and my producer came in. So here we go. I wanna go back to the beginning of this very briefly, a little prologue for you, a small prologue. In 2020, I was building a house with my wife on eight acres on the fam corner of the family farm when in the middle, after half the house is constructed, a very expensive home, my father and my brother, and what he's done, my father set up his estate to where my little brother, who I cannot stand, who can't stand me because he's so jealous, he is like the executor. He's gonna be like the trustee of my dad's estate. So they did this estate planning to where Jeremy's involved with my dad on making these decisions. My house is halfway built and they tried to extort money from me by not giving me the deed as promised. I filed a lawsuit on Friday and I got my deed on Monday. So then what happens is I found out, being my dad's business partner and one of my dad's biggest defenders for 59 years, very loyal to my father, he's my business partner for 30, 40 years. What happens? My dad actually tried to steal my stock in the company. I gave him my stock uh, security for a loan, I paid the loan back, and for 25, 30 years I'm paying taxes on 15% ownership of the family company and my dad tried to claim that I gave him the stock, or I sold him the stock 30 years back. I could not believe what he did to me. I sued him. And during that process, I also found out that my dad was a pedophile. It was pretty earth shaking. But guess what? What I did, oh, and I also found out that his farm manager molested two of my, uh, two of my sisters and he didn't do anything about it. So I went from being this wonderful, loyal son to, I, you know, my father disgusts me, okay? Well, I filed that lawsuit, and guess what? There was a settlement, and I won. So I just want to give you the backdrop of that. So Jeremy hates my guts, and I can't stand my brother Jeremy. He's just not a good person. So what happened was is my wife and I take these walks uh, all the time down. We have a half a mile driveway and we take our walks all the way to the green road and we share a driveway. All you people who have gone to Sugar Ridge, we're the people that live in the house back that long driveway to the left. So we share, by the way, we're the ones that blacktopped it for them, blacktopped this shared part of the driveway. Well, my nephew Jonah, who is Jeremy's son, would come by and would rev the engine up every time he got near, would rev the engine up. And then on a couple occasions, he would act like he was gonna swerve and hit my wife when she was walking. She told me about this. I said, what should we do? You, she, and she goes, I wanna file criminal charges. I said, ah, that won't do any good. So this guy has just been an absolute punk. Revving his engine, acting like he's gonna his. And so the other day, I'm getting my mail. It's October 3rd, I think. I'm getting my mail and I look over and Jonah's pulling into Sugar Ridge and he flips me off. And it was like lightning through my blood. I was like, you know what? I'm tired of this punk harassing us. By the way, back those in, in the 2020, my brother, uh, Jeremy, the big wimp he is, filed for an EPO against me. What did I do? I said, fine, I'll take the EPO. I don't care about the EPO. Uh, it's supposed to be up like in April. Guess what? I've not violated the EPO. I don't care. I don't want to be near my brother. So what do they do? They, uh, I, I follow um, uh, Jonah in my truck, I don't get near him. I took pictures of it because I knew he was taking pictures of it. I follow him in my truck. He won't stop. He finally stopped. I stopped to get out of my truck. He drove off. I drove up beside him. He wouldn't get out of his truck. And then finally, I'm thinking, you know what? I'm sure he's calling his, bro his dad. His dad's calling the police. I'm not doing anything wrong. I didn't ram him, didn't touch him, didn't threaten him, didn't do anything. So I just left and came back. The police come and they come to the gate. We got a gate. We, we I got a gate, security gate. They come, and they're up there. I could have said, ah, heck with you guys. No, I went up to the gate. And we told them everything from our side of the picture, what happened. And by the way, folks, I cuss too much. I admit it. I'm a sinner, not a saint. I don't gamble. I don't drink. Um, 
you know, I don't, I don't, and I'm not into porn. I don't have any of those vices, but I cuss too much. And I know I do. So, I know, and I knew they had their body cameras on. So what do they do? They file, uh, at the, uh, in the encouragement of that, they filed criminal charges against me for menacing, um, harassing communications. That's because I, I contacted my sister-in-law and told him that, you know, I'm not messing around. I'm not going to take it from this kid anymore. Criminal trespassing third degree. Now, that's what they, that's what they filed against me. Well, I, I think my appearance is November 19th. By the way, when I found out the sheriff wanted the papers, I said, bring me the papers. I don't care. So today, they filed for an EPO uh, against me uh, for Jonah. And I'm going to tell you that. I'm going to go back to that story in a minute. But the bottom line is, is that I didn't do anything wrong. And I warned them. I said, you know, you get this in the public realm, I'm going to defend myself. Well, guess what? The Courier-Journal, Joe Zonka, sends me an email asking if I want to comment about this. And I said, sure, you can't make this up. I call the guy. He doesn't answer. I email him and say, why don't you call me? He doesn't call me. I sent him my statement that's posted on um, uh, social media. I sent him the video that I did after this happened on social media. I got to ask you this question. And I, and I said this in my other video. Context matters. If somebody flips me off, I don't care. But the context, this is a kid who is a senior at Covenant Catholic High School who is acting in this very threatening way to my wife and me, and then he flips me off, and I just wanted to confront him about it and say it's got to stop. Now his parents, rather than telling great parenting on Julie and Jeremy's part, and rather than saying, hey, stop doing this to your uncle and your aunt, no, they condone it and they want to file bogus criminal charges against me, which by the way, I will represent myself, I will have a jury trial, and I look forward to it. However, I've had a conversation with a lawyer uh, involved in their camp today, and I said, you know what, they want this to keep going, all it's going to do is embarrass the hell out of them because I don't care. I haven't done anything wrong, and everybody knows my people, my personality, I am who I am, I'm transparent as hell, my people aren't going to care. And the reason why I'm doing this video is you understand that I have not committed any crimes. This is all bogus. For example, there has never been one single time, not once, that my father or Jeremy on behalf of my father told me that I was never allowed at Sugar Ridge. In fact, if you notice Sugar Ridge participants, remember when this first happened and I just pointed out that Sugar Ridge is owned by a pedophile, you may not want to go there anymore? Well, guess what? My dad, by the way, I got documentation, I'm not just saying this, from about five to ten people that my dad grabbed young adult males' crotches. And then other stuff, too. Now, just think about this. I said, do you want to go to Sugar Ridge? And I just let it go. I let it go. Have I said anything about Sugar Ridge for the last three years? No. I haven't said anything to them. They've never told me I couldn't be on Sugar Ridge. So my criminal trespassing is following Jonah down Sugar Ridge. Really? Next thing, they, I never threatened, touched, rammed, any shape or form Jonah Dieters. There's not going to be any evidence whatsoever that I said, I'm going to kick his ass. I didn't say, I'm going to kick your ass. There wasn't one threat made by me against Jonah. Not one. Never was. Third... My, my uh, sister-in-law said harassing communications that I sent her a text and then I called her and said, I'm not messing around with this guy anymore. Well, what happened is, is I was never told by Julie to stop texting her. I've tried to file harassing communications against people and you know what the police always say? They say, well, you gotta tell them not to communicate anymore. Then if they communicate, oh, they don't play that with me. Julie didn't block my phone number. Julie didn't say, stop texting me. I just said, I mean, it's unbelievable. So that's my menacing criminal trespass and harassing communications. And the liberal state media will try to make this sound like I'm some crazy guy, like they always do. By the way, Joe Zonka, the Courier Journal, doesn't cover the Liberty Fests. Joe Zonka doesn't cover the Butcher of Pakistan. Joe Zonka doesn't cover anything, Dieter's Law, or I do. They only cover when there's something like this. And I'm not afraid of it because I made a pledge to you. There's nothing in my past. I got some embarrassing moments, okay? I've sinned. But there's nothing in my past 
that any of you support me or want to support me, you're going to say, well, man, we can't support that bulldog, you know, because there isn't. Now, here is something else. Oh, the other thing that my, my wife is going to, my wife, I told my wife not to, now she is going to file criminal charges for terroristic threatening against Jonah. And you know what else? He hunts out of season on the farm. Hunts out of season on the farm. Now, so I, I've, I've kind of laid the groundwork, but I, I, want, I want to share something else with you today. It was unbelievable. And I hope I can do this uh, without emotion because I care so much about what I call my people. When I went to the courthouse this morning on this EPO hearing for uh, Jonah, I saw my brother Jeremy walk in in front of me and I walked in so I knew he was gonna be there. And I walked in the courtroom and it was crowded. And it was in Chris Mayling's courtroom. And there were about 30 uh, to 40 people in there waiting for their cases to be called. Now this is domestic violence, okay? And I walked in there and there was like three or four people that knew me. Um, and these, what I would call, you know, average Joe citizens, you know? And they were all there for, as witnesses, seeking an order not. And they were all very friendly. They said, hey, Bulldog, hi, Eric. Um, and I sat down in front very proudly. I saw that my name was 10th on the list. This is great, folks. Please finish watching this because what I'm about ready to tell you is why I'm running for governor. So one of the many reasons. So I'm sitting there and I'm waiting to be called. And uh, I'm not being called. There he's, Chris Mayling is calling every single case but mine. Chris Mayling does not like me at all, okay? We've sparred before, okay? He doesn't acknowledge my presence. He calls all the lawyers' cases first, which is normal and common. Then he starts calling all the cases, and he doesn't call mine. And I'm sitting there thinking to myself, well, he's going to call me last. He doesn't say anything to me or anything. So you ready for this? He gets down. All of them are done. There's some lawyers in the courtroom, some other people in the courtroom. You know what Chris Mayling says? It's all on the record. He says, I want to clear the courtroom for the Dieters matter. Now think about that, folks. I was there. I was prepared to walk up to that council table like any average Joe citizen and have my uh, matter called before the court in the public realm. I had to sit there and got to sit there and listen to all the strife that these people had gone through. And some of these people need a domestic violence order. Some of these people need an emergency protection order. But a lot of these people are just struggling in life, have some problems in life, and somebody says something they regret and they drop it. People don't show up for these things. And I'm looking out in these faces of these people and all I see is strife and fear and pain and struggle. These are the people that are fighting inflation every day today, fighting to make ends meet with all that stress and everything else. And somebody comes home with a little too much to drink and something bad happens. And by the way, I'm not condoning that. But the pain that I saw and the, those people, I, they, they don't get to hear my problem, but I, I got to hear their problem. It was shameful. Story gets better. Chris Mayling then asks the bailiff to go find Julie Dieters. And he says, I rode up the elevator with them and I told them that I would call their case last. I'm like, what? The, the judge that hates me is riding the elevator up with uh, Julie ta talking about the case? Talking about? And he never once looked at me and said, Eric, um, I'm going to call your case last if you want to go get a coffee and come back. No courtesy to Eric Dieters. None. None. So what do I do? I go. Uh, I sit there. They, 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 they said, go call out the hallway. Now, by the way, I walked down the hall and I didn't see him. The sheriff called the hall two times. No answer. I'm sitting there. I said, well, I guess they left. I guess maybe they checking out and they left. If that would happen with any of those people, by the way, it did happen. You sit there and listen. They call the hall. Nobody answers. The judge dismisses it. 
The judge kept telling him to keep going out, keep looking. So after five or ten more minutes of looking, they find him. But that's the curtain. So, so, you know, the fix is in on me, right? So he comes in. Oh, then I find out because Jonah's a juvenile, they even referred it to the Children's Law Center. So the Children's Center, Law Center's lawyer there, Jeremy's there, Julie's there, and yours truly is there. So they call the case. And the judge says, well, Children's Law Center didn't get this in time, so I got to maybe put this off for two weeks. I'm like, I don't want to come back in two weeks. I want this over with. This is silly. So I said, can I make a proposal? And here's what I proposed. I said, I don't want to be around Jonah. Jonah doesn't, I I don't want the kid near me. I said, just put the EPO on me, just like you did Jeremy's. Just put the EPO on me, because I don't want to be near him anyway. And I don't keep keep it. Now, they had to think about it. It was like a pause, like, well, I guess. I mean, in other words, I gave them a curveball. I give them what they want, and they didn't know whether they wanted to accept it or not. So they did. I walked out of there with an EPO against me on Jonah Dieters. I mean, would you, do you ever give a darn about getting an EPO against you, somebody you don't even want to be around? So get this. So, so that is, so I'm sitting there, and that is the kind of justice that goes on every single day. Favoritism forked out to the well-heeled, you know, the little guy. You know, all of the common courtesies extended not. And by the way, it gets even, it gets even better. I want to let you know to all the gay community, okay? Folks, I got so many friends who are gay. I have relatives who are gay. I'm not anti-gay at all. But I know my brother Jeremy hates that I know he's gay and he's married. So I enjoy poking him with that, okay? Because I know he's gay and he's married. So I enjoy teasing him about that, all right? And then Jonah, the only picture I could find of Jonah was on his Instagram, which he took down, that showed him dressed up all colorful and whatnot, and I was joking, well, he looks gay too. But I was saying that to chide them. I don't, I just want you to know that I, because in the criminal report, it has the, uh, the, the, the uh, police, the criminal complaint is me making those comments. But I want you to know that I'm not anti-gay at all, but I enjoy calling Jeremy a gay married man. Now, bottom line is, you know, I am a fighter. Now, just think about this. I can sum this up. I get cheated by my father cheated by my brother. I fight back and I win. Then my nephew is trying to act like he's scaring my wife, like he's going to hit her with her truck repeatedly. What would you do? What would you do? Wouldn't you like, maybe like go talk to your nephew? But see, unlike some family members, you would just have a fight or an argument. Jeremy fires EPOs and then puts his family through this public crap. I didn't ask for this be all public. I didn't ask for it to be all public. They made it public. And here's what's great about it. You know that I will fight for you the same way I fight for myself. I prove it every single day. Now, I will bet you any of you that watch this video all the way through is going to say, I like him even more. Everybody gets all the criminal charges fought against you. I ain't worried about those criminal charges. I predict that those charges will get diverted. I mean, I even even told a lawyer uh, for Jeremy, I said, I'll take diversion on the charges. By the way, I'm eligible for diversion. So I'm not going to get convicted. And if I do go to a jury trial, I will win. And I'll represent myself, and I'll subpoena everybody. Heck, we'll sell tickets to the thing. You would probably like to come down and watch this trial. But that's, it's just so messed up. And this is what I deal with on a daily basis, fighting the system and fighting the man. Because everybody else wants to feel like, how do they fit into the country club? They worry about what everybody thinks. I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn. I'm me. I'm real. I'm one of the people. Average. Somebody told me, Eric, people don't like being called average Joe people. That's a bunch of baloney. Everybody knows if you're the typical middle class American, You're considered the average Joe American. I can relate to you. I can connect to you. I will fight for you. I'm not somebody like Julie and Jeremy that want to live in country squire states because they want to, they bought the smallest house in country squire states so they can live in country squire states. And Julie was down there with her Louis Vuitton uh, bag. Maybe it was a uh, knockoff. I don't know. But that's what they're all about. I'm not about that. I'm about fighting for people every day. 
So anyway, this is the defense of myself facing criminal charges, a governor's candidate. I told, I told the lawyer, I said, if you think I'm worried about this, you're crazy. This will help me because the people will realize that I'm somebody that they want to fight for them. This is the bulldog. Every dog has their day. Sorry for the long video, but I think it was worth it.